Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Good Time Show. I'm your host, Damon Epps. Today, I'd like to introduce Justin Turnus. He's a doctor of physical therapy with an emphasis on mindfulness and performance. We will discuss the benefits of breath work, ice baths, and the emerging world of psychedelic healthcare and the effects they have on the mind, body, and soul. So um, let's get into it, shall yes, we? Yes. Let's get into it. So welcome to The Good Time Show, Justin. Thank you. <clears throat> um, excited to be here. I like it. So you are a Northwest Arkansas local. I am a Fayetteville native, born and raised. I uh, grew up in Fayetteville. Went to Fayetteville High School, went to the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, and studied pre-med kinesiology, wound up going the physical therapy route. That took me to Manchester, New Hampshire, right outside of Boston. And from there, across the country to San Diego, where I've been for the last seven plus years. What made you want to be a doctor early on in life? Yep, yep. that's a, uh, a family um <clears throat> very highly influenced by my family. My father was a psychiatrist. Okay. Uncle oncologist, uncle radiologist, uncle ER doc, another uncle in the medical field. My mom was a nurse. Uh, so that was always something that I was exposed to growing up and I had a deep interest in. So I knew at some point, like I knew growing up, I loved medicine and being involved in medicine. That that definitely pointed me in the direction of pursuing uh, healthcare. Did you have an idea that you were going to go down a different path before you got into mindfulness and wellness? Oh, yeah. So the whole journey is just uh, pretty phenomenal how everything's come together to where I am right now as far as teaching and facilitating uh, meditation and not just the physical health practices, but a mental, emotional health practices. Um, I was an athlete growing up, so I always played sports. And that, that's what drew me to physical therapy is because physical therapists are very hands-on with athletes and general population injuries. It's kinesiology. It's body movement. Um, and <clears throat> that was my uh, – I was – I perceived that that's what I wanted to do. And as I got into physical therapy and started practicing physical therapy, I noticed that a lot of my patients weren't getting better from the prescription of movement and exercises that we would have them do. And it was interesting to me because whenever someone has low back pain, you do low back pain exercises and they get better. But people weren't getting better. And I noticed that this demographic of people that weren't getting better showed up to the clinic very stressed out. They, they showed up anxious, tight, shallow breathing. And intuitively, it's just like, okay, hey, let's, let's breathe. Let's relax. What, what's going on? How can we like be present in this clinic right now? How can we like get you focused and open your body more relaxed and receptive to the physical therapy? And at the same time as I was asking my my clients and patients these questions, I was doing a lot of self-discovery. I noticed my own anxiety and stressors. And that's when I jumped into doing, jumped into the ice bath. I jumped into ice. I jumped into Wim Hof method, breath work. And I found that those work. What years was this? What, this is like 2016. Okay, so, so, 2016. so you were still in Fayetteville? So, okay, so, yeah. I'm I'm in physical therapy school, and going to class, I was always a kind of good student, but just good enough to get, to get by. It's never yeah. really, like, excelled in the classroom yeah. and had ADHD and dyslexia, and I was, like, class clown sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I discovered that um, I wanted to just improve my health and wellness, and this is in physical therapy school, and prior to PT school, didn't have the best like last couple of years of college, depression, uh, stress, not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, um, not making the best decisions and reflected and, and at the same time of realizing that there were things that I no longer wanted to do that weren't serving me well, I discovered meditation. Such as, such as partying? Yeah, partying. Yeah, okay. partying. Yeah, partying. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah, partying. And... I discovered Wim Hof method and breath work and meditation. And my sister. And just so me, everyone that yeah, kind of yeah. knows, I kind of know what breath work message, I mean, breath, uh, <clears throat> sorry, the yeah. Wim Hof method is. Yes. And for any of you guys out there that are listening, Wim Hof is the guy, if you watch Instagram at all, he's the guy that always is in like the Arctic swimming with mm -hmm. a group of people, or he's got some crazy ice bath. Yeah. But he's very famous on the internet. He's the, um, he's I didn't the realize ice he man. was, huh? he's the ice man. He's the so, ice man. He's, he's from the Netherlands. He has a crazy beard, crazy accent. He, he, um, he climbed Mount Everest in nothing but shorts and boots. This guy was considered superhuman 
because of these feats, uh, subjecting himself to extreme cold conditions. But he never took that that credit of like, oh, I'm superhuman, I'm special. He's like, everyone can do this. We can all breathe. We can all get into the cold. All we need to do is... Do you know what made connect. him want to do it? Uh, yeah, so he, his wife died by suicide and when he was in his like upper 20s. And so whenever she she died, he went into depression. And he said that he had this like woke up in the middle of the night, had this like premonition. He heard some words that said the ice will heal you, like you go to the cold. And so like the next morning, I think he went into the, the like winter uh, um, waters of the Netherlands and he just started doing that every single day. And he became that guy, that like weird guy that was getting yeah. into the cold water and news news. Um, There's like a newscast that recognized that. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Yeah. I, I haven't even watched yeah. a newscast, but I know that there was a. There was a situation where yeah. they were like watching this. I, I guess his neighbors were probably like, yeah. "Look at this crazy idiot!" Yeah. Like crazy that's, that's in the water mm -hmm. of the Netherlands in icy cold water. Mm -hmm. And then, but then it wasn't just. The, it, is this? It might be two different things. So that, like the um, the news like filmed him or yes. whatever. But they also took him to a science. Thing. Well, that's later two down. different things. Okay, okay so, great. So we'll, we'll just like complete the Wim Hof like okay, great. story. Sorry, let me, and if you want to learn more about Wim Hof, there's a ton of videos on that. But he, um, he. Gained popularity, became the Ice Man, and he started to share and teach his breathing practice that helped him control his nervous system and helped generate heat so that he could go into the cold for long periods of time without getting hypothermia. And then he would get out and feel amazing, and his energy would be great. And down the line, they f they did research his technique, the Wim Hof method. They took like twenty individuals, <clears throat> gave them a an exotoxin that would make you vomit, throw up, get sick. Uh, and he, Wim Hof, trained these individuals how to do this breathing technique, and not a single one of them showed symptoms at all. Like, they, they got, like, double-dosed, and they are like, nope, <sighs> we're good. <sighs> and they were just breathing and, and really circulating and empowering their body and their body's immune system to combat these toxins. And so that was a really, like, trademark uh event and research study which essentially showed that through our conscious action breathing we can influence not only our nervous system but we can also influence our immune system for the better and so that that really exploded into this uh new um popularization uh of um breath work as being a health care modality and that's really what piqued my interest and i brought wim hof method into the physical therapy clinic and started teaching my stressed out patients breathing techniques, which is like hyperventilation, some exhale holds, exhale retentions, and that really caps your body's, um, uh, your, your body's biochemistry and makes you change your blood pH purposefully in an acute manner that has a really positive benefit. And all my patients were just like, they loved it, their stress went away, and they had improved patient outcomes as far as the uh, documentation goes. And um, I was the the woo woo physical therapist that everyone kind of like make fun of. Gotcha. So this is 2016. This is 2016 is when I learned Wim Hof method and I practiced it by myself for like two years. And okay. I was like, I have a superpower. And I told people about <laughs> it and they're like, you're fucking crazy. I was like taking a cold bath every single morning in New Hampshire in the winter. It's really cold. And so I was taking cold baths and I was like getting to class and I was like buzzing with energy and like I was excited to learn and all my ADHD went away and I'm like the perfect student for the first time in my whole life because I was actually like interested and the rest of my classmates are like drowning in coffee and asleep. And I was just like, okay, there's something going on here. Um, and so 2018 is when I got into practice. So from 2018 to 2020, before COVID happened, I had two years of implementing this into the uh, into my into my space um, as a physio. And so um, it, it's just fascinating how that works so effectively. And so I, I teach that now. And, and when COVID happened, I just naturally was like, okay, everyone's stressed out. Jumped on Facebook, was like, okay, everyone, Facebook Live, hey, let's breathe together. And started doing some like breath work practices and like hundreds of people would join and be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Because everyone's trapped in their house and stressed the hell out. And so then I was like, oh, I should teach breath work. Maybe I'm a breath work coach instead. So I sh have shifted from physio, not fully. I still have my license. I still practice. I still love helping individuals with their uh, physical ailments. Um, but I've shifted to 
the stress reduction practices because it doesn't matter what's going on physically, mentally, behaviorally, at work. If you're stressed, you're not going to perform well. So I, I try to find ways that can help people release stress, reduce stress, mm -hmm. and perform better. And whatever that means for you, performing at work, life, uh, sports, athletics, recreation. Um, so that's where I've shifted. Still physio, but now like stress, stress coach is, is probably the most current title for me. What have you found? You said that you, you know, people weren't getting healed. Did you find that people were like that breath work is actually starting to heal people with their back injuries and mm, that kind yeah. of world? So, so it supports the healing process because um, we naturally heal as humans. Our body's like made and set up to uh, combat injury, tissue damage, um, uh, disease. And so breath work uh, in, in certain ways. And there's so many breath techniques. There's a ton. It's not just Wim Hof method. There's holotropic and then there's box breathing and there's um, – just regular meditation. What is box focusing. breathing? Box Somebody breathing is about like, okay, yeah, box breathing is like the easy one to remember. It's like four seconds in, four seconds hold, four second exhale, four second hold. So you make this box with your breath. Five second, 10 second box breath, 10 second inhale, 10 second hold, 10 second exhale, 10 second hold. So controlling your breath and having these little moments of holding gives you breath control. It also encourages you to slow down brings your focus awareness to your body, to your breath. And those, all those little factors add up for a positive experience. Everyone's like, oh, box, breathing, uh, box breathing is amazing, right? But what they're really doing is just slowing the fuck down, um, getting present with their body. And you can do that with a box. You can do that with a triangle. You can do that with all kind of up and down, Wim Hof. So breath, uh, from what I, how I practice it, it's a, uh, a way to manipulate the nervous system in many ways. So you can, I use a lot of different techniques together versus just like, I'm a Wim Hof teacher and I only teach Wim Hof. I'm like, I'll take pieces from Wim Hof, I take pieces from box breathing and I uh, uh, fit it to you and whoever I'm working with and, and really individualize it. So I did breath work because I was kind of on a date and I thought it might be something cool for us to do and I genuinely saw it on a, on a list at a yoga studio and it said, um, breath work. I legitimately thought I was going to lay down and breathe and mm -hmm. think about the moon and mm -hmm. talk about zodiac signs because mm -hmm. that's what's what I, it was a yoga studio and it's I was like, oh, Angeles, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm a Taurus. Venice or something. Oh yeah, I'm a Taurus and you know what I mean? I like nice shiny things. The next thing I know, um, the guy was a teacher that had been living in a temple for I don't know eight years or something. He was a pretty intense guy. Mm -hmm. um, he then had told me that we were going to breathe very, very hard. Um, we were going to breathe and he said something, which you can probably tell me all the stuff that happens. There was uh, something that's over your heart. There's like something that's whatever, like, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna say acid, but like some kind of something. Okay. You breathe and all of a sudden, <laughs> to not be worried, but my hand was going to cramp up and uh -huh. it might start to raise <clears throat> then over my head. Um, mm -hmm. I had no idea what he was talking about. I was like, mm -hmm. this is a little crazy. I was here to just have a talk about Zodiacs. Mm -hmm. Um, but I said, whatever, I was all in. So I start breathing. I want to get into this a little bit later too, yeah. about like, cause it is some of this stuff. It looks a little crazy and we are in Arkansas and I feel like yeah. we, I want to talk about how the well, transition because okay. in LA it's kind of just, oh, just like, like a little ahead. disclaimer. Uh, you're talking like LA woo woo breathing vibes, but underlying everything that you're about to talk about and what right. happened is science. It's physiology. Oh. It's everything. So I'll just like break. Oh, so, so listen to what he's saying. Because it happens to a lot of people. It's called tetanus or tetanus. Oh yeah, tell me what it's that called is. Tetany. Tell it's like okay. it's like a nervous system reaction. Um, you breathe in such a way that your blood flow goes into your core, and your nervous system is very stimulated, sympathetic, and your body can go into fight, fight and flight, or freeze. And there's this like freeze, like polyvagal nervous system response, and so you're almost like in this, um, like when you fall asleep, your body goes into the paralysis. Like you're you're slightly aware and awake. You're dreaming. And, and but your body's like in a state of paralysis. So when you're breathing, you kind of go into this like sleep hypnotic state and you're no longer in control of your body. So that like kind of tensioning of the hand can happen. It doesn't really happen that much. Whenever I do breath work practices, people don't get that experience. Yeah, no, wait, this I mean, is a different type of breath technique that you're talking about that I know of. Uh, and so 
I it was really yeah, yeah, we, me and you did a breath like, work. It was this was definitely a yeah. much different yeah. situation. But finish your story because okay, yeah. it's so, funny. Yeah, because okay. yeah. So yeah, when you guys all out there definitely do breath work, I totally believe in it. And, uh, the, pow- and the power of persuasion is amazing too. You're like, oh yeah, you're gonna do this breath work, and sometimes people quack like a duck, and next thing you know, Damon's on the ground quacking. Like yeah, a I mean, duck, it was. Like, I, I and I also that? just was kind of like I was like, all in. I I got there. I was like, whatever. There's you know, it's okay. Okay, there's there's Kundalini people, and it was just like it was a whole thing. So. You know, I went in and I just kept breathing. I kept breathing. And I had some really awakening moments of like, mm-hmm. this got really crazy. I mean, because it is, I mean, you are hyperventilating <laughs> to a point. Now, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. this room, we did your class. It is not as intense as what this was. It definitely but some hard. Maybe, but maybe in a similar way. It definitely uh, is. Psychedelic in some Oh, 100%. Way, I definitely, yes, yes. yes. It, there's yeah. definitely. Um, uh, a component, of, a component, uh, a hundred percent. So at a, yeah. at a certain point, yeah. Like if you want to talk about like what happened, I was breathing so hard that all of a sudden I propelled and I told you before, all of a sudden I was sitting in somebody's trailer park. Oh, I yeah. didn't grow out of a trailer park. <laughs> I don't know why I was in a trailer park home. I have that's no like idea. True, it's like the weirdest that's, thing that's that ever true, happened. True. Um, I tell people all the time, like I breathed until I was sitting in a trailer well, park. Well, so let's like, not so, scare the viewers and let's yeah, go, not scare the list. No, no, this is great. You can leave it because it's funny, but like. You, you never know what your brain is going to create. Like you go into dream state, you go so far into dream state. I'm sure people have had a dream about. So let's talk about that before. before. Let's see, yeah. get into that. So so you when you breathe. Okay, so we start this breathing technique. Just so everybody can understand. Uh-huh. You do this breathing technique. We do the breathing. It's like who you and this dude or you and no me? you and me like okay, or just okay. all of it just in general. Like yeah. I want to talk about. I want you to explain to everyone of like. So you start the okay, breathing, you okay. go into a thing. We do these holds, Let and you give, even said a little bit of like it, it does like it's a fight or flight, but it. it just explain to us <laughs> what happens during this process, yeah. I guess. Okay, cool. Um, breath 101. Um, when we breathe, it's respiration. We're pulling air into our lungs. We're breathing oxygen. Oxygen is then distributed into our blood vessels. That goes into our cells. Cells create um, energy, heat, productivity. So our respiratory system, our lung system, is the number one energy-producing system of the body. In today's day and age, we think it's the stomach, the gastrointestinal, like, hey, I'm, oh, I don't have energy. I need energy drink, energy bar. Oh, I'm tired. I need to eat food. Yes, we need food, but we can go like seven days, 10 days without food. You're fine. Um, you can't go much more than two minutes without breath because that is our number one source of energy. So respiration is happening. Even when we hold our breath, you're still pumping blood. You're still circulating that oxygen and it's still being used and, and it creates that that um, energy production. So that's respiration. Uh, when you hyperventilate, <sighs> most people know and are familiar with hyperventilation when it comes to stress and anxiety, panic attacks, <sighs> like things happen and your body reacts. That's, that's uh, an autonomous reaction. That's an involuntary... <sighs> hyperventilation. It stimulates the nervous system. Uh, There's a cascade effect of different hormones that are released uh, to combat whatever situation that is. Now, in the term of breath work, controlled hyperventilation, voluntary, I'm doing this willingly to pull more air in, to uh, ventilate a little bit faster, to purposefully stimulate myself into that sympathetic system, fight or flight. So my body reacts, my brain reacts, has that cascade effect of like readiness. And then I go, and slow down. And your body's confused for a moment, your brain's confused for a moment because you were just like reacting like something dangerous was happening. And then you go into a nice slow cadence. And when you go into that slow cadence, your body and your brain quickly recognize, oh, I'm safe, everything's cool, I'm good. And then you drop even deeper into relaxation. So many people in today's day and age are stressed the hell out. They're like statically, chronically stressed. And they try to meditate and they try to slow down. They just can't do it. Like they're like, (laughs) they try an app for 20 seconds. They're like, this doesn't fucking work. No meditation for me. But your physiology isn't open to that meditation. Your physiology is like locked in that static stress state. That's why exercise is beneficial because you're purposefully engaging in sympathetic nervous system and then after you're done with the exercise you feel great you're relaxed and your body's like hell yeah we're good same thing with breath it's a form of exercise and that's kind of where i'm taking it because as a physical therapist i I think about breathing not just as like the act of hyperventilating i don't think of breathing as a way to have that like hallucinating psychedelic experience although that can be a byproduct of it 
I think of it as a way to improve your lung capacity function, <sighs> move a, a lot of the joints and um, um, inner, internal organs that move. There's like massaging that happens when you breathe deeply um, from your diaphragm. So I'm thinking about it from that technique, but at the same time, that byproduct is uh, full relaxation, stress reduction, because you're purposefully activating and then you slow it down. And so you're, you're gaining control. So, so many people who are stressed out and I'm like, I, I usually start my classes by just asking like, uh, who meditates? A few people raise their hand. Who's tried to meditate and doesn't work? A lot of hands go up. Great. At the end of the class, I'm like, okay, did anyone feel like they meditated for the first time? All of those hands that were like up and said they couldn't, at the end of the class, they're like, whoa. They say, very commonly, the first, this is the first time that my mind's been quiet. Wow. I felt like my body, oh, I could feel, I, could, I was connected to myself. And that's the that's that's what lights me up, and that's what motivates me to keep teaching these practices, is because it's a the best the best tool to access connection to ourselves. I, I will say I was I was pretty stressed the other day. I mean, I just you know I kind of came to your class, um, having to deal with a few things, and mm -hmm. I mean I wasn't crazy stressed, but you know there was stresses there. Normal human, normal stress, American so just, daily yeah. stress. I mean, if it's just like oh my god, I forgot to do my laundry. Whatever Plus it's it was. Damon, so yeah, yeah, like, exactly. So oh, I was a little stressed. <laughs> But it is really nice when you get done with this breathwork stuff. Mm -hmm. It is really nice. Like you do have a moment where you are breathing super intense and it mm -hmm. is it is a moment and you're working at breathing. You're mm -hmm. not just like relaxed and um, you're staying conscious and you're really staying in it. But when you're done and you have that moment, you really are like I was com I'm completely I was completely calm mm -hmm. when we were done. I yeah. was completely calm. And, and now, I kind of knew that might happen, but yeah. I was it was such a wonderful experience that people yeah. that are scared of doing breath work is like I do feel like people are scared you know being in LA yeah. even when I first did it in LA I was like these people are freaks now that yeah. was six seven years ago yeah um we're in Arkansas now even you said you can't because you came back recently because you feel like that things are progressed in this town mm -hmm. especially in this little nugget of the world mm -hmm. this little um, bubble of northwest Arkansas this little bubble of northwest yeah. Arkansas yeah. um there's there's more openness I think to these practices because there's more research that's coming out. There's more uh, news articles. There's more uh, things that we see on social media about, hey, breathe, slow down. And it's such an intuitive thing too. Like we're always breathing and we're always offering that like advice, hey, breathe, you know. Um, but there is more of an openness to the actual like act of breath work. But it's still like I think it almost cl too closely hugs the line of uh, – like pseudo science woo woo stuff, and so um, but there there's a lot more openness and and it's interesting. That's why I really speak about stress because who's not stressed? Everyone is stressed. Who who would be open to stress reduction? Great. Open. Are you open to doing a technique that can help you reduce some stress, release some stress? Yes. So let's let's practice some breath work. Uh, that that really seems to be a, a a clear and well received way of communicating about it but uh it's still a hard battle like what do you do oh i teach people how to hyperventilate and then they're like <laughs> right. freaking like slightly <laughs> right like go hallucinate and, then, and people and then don't like to put themselves out of control no and you but you're in such control because you are oh i just meant like in front of other yeah. people but in like front of other people yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah, I, that's true like, yeah we hold know. on um i mean that's I even doing just, yoga so a lot of people don't want to do yoga yeah. because they're like I've, i don't want to hold some weird stance yeah. you know yeah. there is it, but it's so of good. Course, of course, of course. It's so good. I'm curious, did your, uh, like, stress release, did that persist throughout the evening? Yeah, it did. And it really throughout did. the night, and did like, you sleep better? Uh, I, I mean, I always say, I mean, I've got a lot of ailments with back and hands, and I just, you know, had a bad back, and mm -hmm. I've got this bad neck right now um, that I haven't been sleeping. And so, uh, but after that breath work, it, it was, you know, the because I think a lot of, you know, if you stress, then you hold a lot of stress just like you said, stress in your shoulders mm -hmm. and the, the shoulders when they are intense, then that pushes all my nerves, which then makes my neck hurt. And it's the whole thing. So, <laughs> whole thing. um, I do think that there is, there's a huge benefit, you know, I think that like learning it was, I mean, I enjoyed the class very yeah. much. Keep coming. Um, keep coming. And, I, and I, I do recall after you said, wow, I, I've been, uh, I've had a lot of like low back pain for a while. And you're like, I don't feel that right now. Right. Like you're like, Oh, no pain. Right. So it's a pain. There's a, there's a component. I'm also like a pain nerd. Uh, I go to, all the pain conferences, and that was another rabbit hole I dove into. Uh, in in combination with breathwork specialization was pain specialization, chronic pain, persistent pain, um, and then also some mindfulness based stress reduction meditation practices. Those three components, plus ice bath, we'll get there. Um, those those together really seem to be really 
a, a positive way for people to have an improved pain experience or reduced pain. Um, but it's funny, like that wasn't our goal. We didn't say, hey, let's get rid mm -hmm. of your pain. We said, hey, let's breathe and, and activate your nervous system, get everything moving. Byproduct was pain reduction. And we're starting to see that too, is when you f have pain and you look at the pain and you focus at the pain and you put all the lights on the pain, it's not really going to go away. It might even amplify a little bit. It's going to bother you a little bit more. So uh, a new focus of pain science and pain management is, oh, let's not talk about your pain today. How's your quality of life? Oh, how can we improve your quality? Oh, how's your physical activity? How can we exercise more? Let's look over here. And after a couple of weeks, oh, how's your pain? Oh, I didn't even notice. It's gone down quite a bit. So there's this shift of focus and byproduct pain regulation takes place. So uh, I love hearing stuff like that because that is my practice. It's helping me with pain. And I've, I'm like stoked to hear it. How's your back today? It's been about a week since we did. Break. Well, it's, oh, um, it's back. It's, to it's, normal. It's, I mean, it's, it's always going to be a thing. Like, you look, I hire had a, me I, as a daily. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a constant <laughs> thing. I, I went to physical therapy for my neck today. So, um, you know, I had a pretty bad, yeah. I had a minor surgery went massively wrong. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's fused and all that kind of stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think the breath work completely helps. One mm -hmm. thing the breath work definitely helped in was getting in that cold water. Yeah. So there was, you know, because I got in that cold bath with you that first time here, and now we have a nice cold bath that's that we'll be getting into. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me, but you want to talk to me about ice baths? I would what? love to. Uh, let's yeah. do it. Let's that's try. The next, just, you that's just go the next for phase. It. Yeah, because yeah, um, <clears throat> back to Wim Hof, he went to the cold for healing, and he found that, and he gained that. Uh, and um, ice bath, cold exposure, hypothermia, uh, hyperthermic conditioning, exposing yourself purposefully to cold uh, for a, an extended period of time is also proving to be a really beneficial health and wellness practice. Um, and then on the other side, it's sauna, heat, uh, hyperthermic conditioning, hyperthermia, um, um, and that's also showing a lot of benefit because you're putting yourself into an environment that forces your physical body to like step up and create heat or combat the heat or generate heat. Um, and so uh, traditionally humans faced the, the natural world a little bit more intimately, right? Now we're in, we have houses with insulation and AC and you got all your North Face jackets and everything. So we, we've created a really comfortable lifestyle, but at the same time, we've distanced ourselves from our natural our natural capacity to face those elements. Um, and so ice bath is gaining a lot of popularity because it's reawakening and reactivating people's like intuitive uh, uh, condition where they're like, oh, I can, I can handle way more than I thought. I went to Iceland for Wim Hof training in 2018, um, 2019. So I went to Iceland for a week and a half, did the whole Wim Hof expedition. We were breathing every day, getting our training. We were walking outside barefoot in the snow. We were jumping into frozen lakes. We were jumping into frozen waterfalls. It really changed my life um, for the better. And um, I remember once we got there, as soon as we arrived, within like 10 minutes, uh, uh, the individual leading the retreat, his name is Casper Vandermeulen. He's like Wim, Wim Hof's like right-hand man. And um, Casper was he said okay everyone shoes off we're going for a walk we all took our shoes off we went for a walk in the snow and he's like this is gonna be a 20 minute walk and i was like okay cool heck yeah i can handle this and about after like five minutes my feet were numb they were hurting i could feel cuts from like the it was like hard snow so it was like cutting my feet and in my head i was like oh my feet are bleeding like oh this is this is the most miserable experience in the world like i had visions of the uh the civil war the stories where like the dudes are like walking barefoot it's like you could see blood on the trail of the snow and I, that was that's what was happening to me i was walking in the snow my feet were cut i was bleeding everywhere and then i look down and there's no blood and i look at the bottom of my feet and there's no cuts and i'm like wait what because i really believed i felt my feet were so cold and they're cut but then i looked down and i was like that was the most like there's the craziest because it showed me how how much i can play into an imagination uh, or a creative an imagery of my mind that I saw it and felt like I felt it. I knew it was real and then I looked down and so I had that conflict and then all of a sudden I was like, wow, I'm way, way stronger than I thought. Oh, I can handle, oh, my feet? My feet are way stronger than I thought they were. And then the rest of that like 15 minute walk was easy. I was like confident and I was like, okay. And that's the same thing that happens when people get into the ice bath for the first time. They're intimidated, they're scared. 
They're like, I've been thinking about this for five days. I can't, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if I can do it. And they get in, expose themselves to a nice cold tub for about 90 seconds to two minutes. And they get out and they're like, oh, there's so much like strength and empowerment. And that, that's dopamine. Like it's a, it's a really healthy dopaminergic practice. So dopamine is reward um, hormone. Uh, dopamine's released whenever you're looking at TikTok and all your cell phone stuff. But <clears throat> the thing about dopamine whenever you're looking at it on your cell phone is you didn't work for it. Dopamine was made to be a reward for effort. So now we're finding a lot of effort, effortless dopamine reception, alcohol, uh, drugs, excessive psychedelics, dopamine activation, but we're not putting forth that effort. So in the ice bath, you're choosing, you're getting in, and you're really like facing the, the, the confronting cold, and your body gets through it. It creates heat, thermoregulation, thermogenesis. You create heat, you get out, and you're like dopamine on fire. Uh, norepinephrine increases too, so you have this like beautiful natural release of uh, mood regulation, um, energy enhancement, um, and then also like antidepressant, anti-inflammation is huge. We're all carrying inflammation. Uh, the cold and cold exposure on a consistent basis, like three times a week, um, that's a good minimum approximately. Uh, that can help decrease your inflammation, uh, your fat storage. A lot of people lose a lot of weight. Doing consistent cold well, then I'll probably exposure, I know. You know, yeah, uh, it's great for wrinkles and skin. It has, it's true, and I definitely like throwing that in there because that definitely gets a nice other subcategory. Yeah, <laughs> but so. um, yeah, so the ice is fascinating, and I've been doing it now for seven years, six, seven years, seven, and um, almost every day over the last seven years. At some point, getting into the cold. Uh, but there's a cold tub or the ocean. I was living in San Diego, San Diego, so jumping in the ocean. Um, cold I, was gonna, I will say that living in California, that was the one thing that I would when I was you know was healing from a, that terrible back surgery. Um, that once I got to a place that I could heal, the mm -hmm. only time that I would ever feel completely okay was when I would go to the ocean and I would go jump in that mm -hmm. cold, miserable ocean. I mean, I like, oh, I see, like it. cold, beautiful but it's, ocean. But it was yeah. cold. But it's yeah, cold. Miserable, it's, if you're, but yeah, it most people don't deep. realize how that the that everybody in Baywatch was freezing. Everybody, so, yeah, every, southern, every girl southern. in Baywatch was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they jump in and like, yeah, oh my god, yeah. look at me! But no, like no, no. that Baywatch girls were freezing. Yeah, and um, <laughs> they are freezing. They did not like. There's like there's like one month where it's really yeah. Everyone thinks California is like this really warm place. Southern California is sunny. And it's beautiful. But the weather's it's, great, but the it's perfect. Water's cold. It's chilly. It's a chilly. Cold. Little, That's why cold. people are in wetsuits all the time. But even in the even in the evening, it gets it's perfect sweater weather. It's warm uh, yeah, in the yeah. day, and it's sweater sweater weather at night. It's perfect. This is true. Okay, so I've been getting in the cold. And a chubby for, guy looks great in a sweater. Yeah, so of just course, so you know, yeah. so it's, it's makes perfect. Gets you slim and fit. Yeah, yeah of right. course. Uh, but yeah, I've been I've been almost daily ice bathing, bathing uh, over the last seven years, and it still sucks. It's still cold. My body still doesn't like it. It's still really hard. I still procrastinate. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get an ice tub, and then like 20 minutes later, I'm like cleaning my blinds and like vacuuming. I'm like, I never vacuum. What am I doing? I'm avoiding getting into the cold water. So no matter like how many times you do it, I anticipate I'm gonna be doing this. This is like a lifelong practice for me. In 30 years, it's still gonna be freaking cold, but um, but <laughs> I still do it because I I I'm like aligning with the felt positive experience that I get from doing it and mm -hmm. the knowing of how beneficial it is for me. But I like to tell people that it doesn't get any easier because they think that it gets easier. It doesn't, but you still got to do it. The world and the internet right now has talked about men's health, right? There's a, there's an emphasis on men, men's depression and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Not that we need to yeah. dive into yeah. that. Yeah. Um, or yeah. you can, we I can. Well, I think there's two more, like there's two areas that we're going to cover, right? Men's health and, and how we can support men um, and, and then the psychedelic space. Uh, okay. I think the transition to psychedelics is pretty natural because those experiences and getting into the cold um, can be psychedelic. Uh, I went to the... Because it's all opening your mind up and yeah. stressing and because you do, you do have moments where you, when you are breathing that your, your body is kind of releasing. Like you said, like people do have this moment of like, wow, this is the first time I've meditated. Yeah, it's And, that, and I, I, I have to say that, that I agree with that. Like I... Yeah. I try to act like I'm meditating. Um, I for sure am like ADD extreme. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I that somebody explained to me too that 
if people are listening to meditation, there's people get intimidated by meditation because they think they're always doing it wrong. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's this thing where you could kind of look at like Gandhi or a Yogi or whatever, and they're sitting there and they're, they're Mm -hmm. weird little pants and whatever. And yeah. And, um, but they're also doing it for like an hour, Mm -hmm. but really if you just try to calm your brain out, even if it's for four seconds, mm-hmm. it's somewhat of, that's what somebody told me. They were like, that's a form of meditation yeah. and you'll just get better at it. Yeah. And like, don't yeah. freak out. But like, it's yeah. just a, it's a, meditation can be as simple. Like I didn't realize that I used to meditate as a child. Like yeah. I'm so hyper and like yeah. whatever. Yeah. But sometimes I just even, even when I didn't know anything about meditation, I just needed to refuel. Yeah. And I would just go into a room that was really dark and go lay on my bed yeah. and just, Chill literally out. chill out chill and out. i would chill out as a kid and i would and, and i would need a day and then mm-hmm. i don't have to do that for another six months yeah but i would you take i would got, have this moment little, yeah you got a, a macro dose of meditation yeah macro there. dose and, of meditation so as i've started to meditate once this yogi was like dude don't worry about it he was like don't he was like dude you're constantly going to be like I'm going to meditate. And then you're going to go, oh, I wonder what McDonald's has. Hmm. Or, oh, I want to meditate. Yeah. Oh, my God. Chick- I think about burritos all yeah, the burrito, time. Yeah, burritos are so like, good. I'm like um, But your brain will and, constantly yeah. um, think of other things while yeah. you're, and not to beat yourself up because your brain is constantly thinking. Your brain's uh-huh. supposed to think. Yeah. But if you can somehow tune out all of it for a moment, then it's great. Yeah. And I will say breathwork did that for me, and people mm-hmm. should try it just to see what happens. Um, you should okay, try it. There we you go. should ab- absolutely try it. And if you need some help trying it, okay. I know and someone then, that can help you try it. Yeah. And then in the world of psychedelics, there is a huge movement right now. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. with, especially started on the, I mean, I feel like started on the West Coast and, you know, all of my friends, people that were, you know, the straightest laced people in the world are now talking about microducing, mi- microducing, microdosing, micro, well, yeah. just, that's speech impediment. Sorry, guys, we have not okay. taken any today, um, but they're microdosing. They're talking mm-hmm. about psychedelics. And you not, know, not I've, quite as loud as how you're talking about them, though. What do you mean? Uh, it's oh, just, you it's, mean? A, it's really it's really uh, sensitive and quiet. It, it so is good. a very sensitive thing. Although um, I, t- but it's you know, getting more. I had a friend who, public. which by the way, you know, when we first, I don't know when ketamine start went ketamine, ketamine hit therapy, the market. Yeah, ketamine when therapy. Ket- well, before it was ketamine therapy, there oh. were just people like <laughs> were going into ketamine. k-holes, right? Well, and, like, so, so there's like a difference between recreational use of psychedelics and therapeutic. Totally use get it, but like all of a sudden, I have a friend who is who is, you know, they're very successful people. They're mm-hmm. very normal people. Mm-hmm. They have a very corporate job. They were going through from mm-hmm. serious depression mm-hmm. for some, you know, a really horrible death happened in the family. Yeah. They went into deep depression. Yeah. They were clinically, they clinically, clini- they had to go away. They yeah. had to be yeah. Cut, yeah. put yeah. away. Um, and, you know, it was bad. I mm-hmm. mean, they, they lost it. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't find their way out and all that kind of stuff. And this was the first time that I'd ever heard someone be prescribed ketamine and mm-hmm. go to ke- and this was before like now ketamine there's like camp. ketamine centers. <laughs> You're going off the ketamine camp, but there's like ketamine yeah. centers yeah, yeah, now. Of you know, like that, like but this was kind of yeah. before that. She was going to the hospital. There were doctors, and it helped her. Yeah. So no matter what my thoughts are, because I, I for sure was not into it. I was like, this sounds crazy to me. Yeah. K holes, but now and I literally just saw a tweet of Elon Musk that was like it was like oh you should do this if you want like and I was like okay wow this thing has really come along oh way. yeah he's talking about ketamine right I guess I don't know he just did a little tweet about it but I was yeah. like but it now it's kind of it's becoming commonplace for people with depression to do ketamine yeah and now well, not just ketamine right ketamine MDMA psilocybin which is magic mushrooms uh, ayahuasca is a popular choice uh, gaining popularity uh, iboga is another one it's um uh, where is it from? I'll, I'll be able to pull that oh, one up. Is that the frog thing? No, no, Iboga. Uh, I'll have to return to the. I have to return to the source and uh, yeah. source of Iboga. It's an uh, I think it's a Western African like plant medicine. Um, but so so one disclaimer. I don't I don't prescribe. I'm not a, a psychedelic uh, assisted therapist in any way, shape, or form. I'm um, an advocate of psychedelics for people who. Um, can find them and have the proper support and set and setting. Uh, and there are a lot of retreat centers and places to do them. Uh, I don't think that it's a, a, a fix all type practice either. Um, so I'm not a psychedelic therapist, but I do think that there's such promise and there's a ton of research coming out. Like, John well, you Hopkins. just went to a, a, yeah. a, a Tell me about the, okay because you went to this psychedelic. <laughs> I'll, I'll, what is it, don't butcher it. Okay, okay yeah. Whatever. I went to the I went to the MAPS, so Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. So the MAPS Psych Science Conference in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Eleven thousand people were there. It was the largest gathering of psychedelic sciences. Um, 
And so it was like a four day um, conference with so many speakers, Paul Stamets, uh, Michael Pollan, uh, Rick Doblin, who started MAPS, and um, a ton, Andrew Huberman was there um, speaking. Who is that? Uh, Andrew Huberman is a uh, neuroscientist out of Stanford who's very popular. He has the Huberman Lab podcast. Um, okay, got you. Huberman yeah, Labs. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, Andrew Huberman's Huberman Labs. Um, Tim Ferriss spoke. Uh, so all these all these high high level influencers, not just only in the psychedelic space, but in the science and health and wellness world, uh, were were there in support. Aaron Rodgers, football player, uh, has spoke about how ayahuasca has been really powerful for his journey for health and mental health and athletic performance. Um, so <clears throat> I went to the conference as a not as a physiotherapist, but as a um, uh, stress stress provider, someone that. Uh, is wanting to learn more about how we can learn about things that can help people in different ways and shapes and forms. So ketamine therapy is extremely popular. MDMA therapy is gaining uh, advocacy to be uh, legal as a therapy. MDMA, like, was, I think MDMA was like the star of the show. So many people were hyped. And, and I would say 80% of the attendees were psychotherapists. So crazy. It's crazy because MDMA was like legal in Dallas for a hot second. Yeah. Well, that's that's a different yeah. <laughs> that's a different story. I want to hear about yeah. that. But um so MDMA uh, therapy is getting a ton of popularity because it seems that it opens up access to unconscious feelings and emotions. And so then you can have a really effective talk therapy versus you go to talk therapy and you're anxious and you're like, I don't really know you and I don't really want to fucking tell you anything and like who and and so um these psychedelic assisted therapies really help people go into the stuff that they probably want to get into anyway. And that's why they're going to therapy. Uh, and so um, going to this conference was really eye-opening because it just showed how much interest there is, where the direction of our healthcare system is going, our mental health system is going. Uh, it's not going all the way over to psychedelics, but psychedelics will, will be a part of the solution um, amongst other things, uh, but it is absolutely coming in many shapes and forms. Macrodosing, microdosing, microdosing is taking a. Um, they used to say that microdosing was like taking just a little bit of magic mushrooms where you don't really feel it, but it's like under doing some underlying positive benefits to your body. Um, but Paul Stamets was saying that he he's now defining microdosing as non intoxicating, like. You take enough psilocybin that you can maybe feel it a little bit, like there's a little bit more color and vibrancy in the world, but you're not intoxicated. You're not uh, unable to drive and um, go about your daily uh, daily living. And so <clears throat> there's there's this really interesting like world that's opening up. It's it's psilocybin, it's MDMA, it's ketamine, it's all of these things. And so something that Andrew Huberman said that I love as a breath worker, I'm like okay psychedelics um are one thing but i get psychedelic type experiences through my breathing practices like my morning meditation i just do like <sighs> i do that 20 times and all of a sudden i feel like more connected and i'm like that's kind of psychedelic andrew huberman said and he's the opening one of the opening uh talks that i went to he's like it's more a state of mind. It's more like enhancing your mind and being more open to reality around you, being more open to the space, being more available to connect with other people. He's like, that's that's psychedelic. It's not specifically consuming what, uh, what's called an entheogen. So entheogen, entheogen is a plant that creates hallucinations. That's one form of psychedelics but having a trippy dream like how psychedelic can you get like you're, you're dreaming about like a car floating and then you're sitting in a trailer park with some random watching tv what the right. hell yeah Happens. exactly so um what we're seeing is that you don't need drugs to create that type of experience you you can open through many modalities people can runners high that's a psychedelic experience if you think about psychedelic experiences from the definition of a shift of the uh human mind, it's a shift of mind state, it's an openness to um, the creative I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. Runners that run 20 miles, I yeah. don't even know how. But They're yeah, just getting they must high go as hell. It. They must go into a different space. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's meditative, it's healing, it feels good. Uh, for some, it's excessive. They're running away from something, I don't it's know. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, so that's just like, but the spectrum of human 
experience is so broad it's wild uh-huh. like what are, what are the benefits that people are seeing from from psychedelics, psychedelics and therapy yeah. Yeah. Uh, so right now like we're, we're recognizing that ssris uh, antidepressants aren't that great for you uh they really don't work that well what it, either what, what is that? SS, sris ssris are uh, serotonin uh selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors they're types of antidepressant drugs like uh, like, uh, uh, like Zoloft, Zoloft and, and, yeah, and okay. Prozac. Is that how that works? I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. That's, we won't get into how it works, but it, that's how it works. Okay. And um, but they work for people. Yeah, like a lot of people take antidepressants and it works. And a lot of people uh, are will have what's called treatment resistant depression. So they try, 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 and they're still kind of depressed. Um, therapy for treatment resistant depression. They've shown that macro dosing, so taking like two grams plus of magic mushrooms, three grams. They call it a hero's dose when you take five grams. This is in a therapeutic setting with a guide. And actually what I learned is that these um, guided trips, uh, these macro doses experiences, usually have teams of five people just being involved and supporting the person who's going through a process. Um, these macro dose experiences uh, on psilocybin, magic mushrooms, in a therapeutic setting are showing huge, huge positive like anti... Uh, so... Um, huge positive antidepressive type effects. Um, typically, people say it's one of the most profound experiences they've had. They don't feel depressed for weeks and weeks and weeks after. Some people say that they just like completely healed everything. Um, and I, I, I've, there's a lot of research and studies that like in end of life uh, type do- diagnoses and hospice care, there's, there's just, I can't imagine how much like stress and anxiety goes through that process. And a lot of people who are facing that do a macro dose experience therapeutic in the therapeutic setting. And they really come to like terms with their phase of life. And, and it, with that comes maybe more openness and, and ability to connect with family members. So there's this like macro dose experience that's psilocybin, that's ayahuasca, that's iboga. Um, these are things that are like making huge differences, like in like one session or in like two nights or two days sessions. Like people are having these huge like awakenings of some sort um, that seem to be very positive. And then MDMA therapy and ketamine therapy and psilocybin therapy too is uh, these are like you're going to a therapist for six weeks, and every time you go and see that therapist, you just take a little bit and you're in that space with them. And that's more of like not so much of like a macro like have the full experience but more of like have enough of uh, mm-hmm. an experience to be more receptive to the talk therapy so i think and I, it seems that through a lot of the research and i am very wary of biased research because there's so much like oh coffee is great oh this oh my that's gosh. that and like so let's put uh let's put uh what is it coconut oil uh-huh. in your coffee yeah. every morning i have a uh i have a uh, uh, uh i was just even thinking about it. i saw a kale salad yeah i have not heard people talk about kale recently <laughs> yeah like you know because yeah. like i kale cured everything it there did. for what three years yeah until someone like creates a, a kale company and then all of a sudden there's some kale research that comes out to support kale so there's that anyway Let's not get into that bullshit. Um, but yeah, a lot of the research uh, is showing promise for this to be an alternative practice. It's not, again, the, the right. s- solution. There's also but, a thing yeah. of like, you don't know what works for each person, mm-hmm. right? There's just like, you I mean, if you need help. Yeah. You have to and it's still it. illegal. Yeah. It's still illegal. So, uh, but there are states that are opening up to that. Like, really? Yeah. I mean, Cal- uh, Colorado. Oh, really? I could buy mushrooms there. Oh, like, really? Openly, like at the conference, chocolate bar. I didn't, but I could have. Um, and then Oregon, uh, all those hippy dippy. Oh, all, those hippy all those hippy dippy states. It always goes hippy dippy. Hippy dippy states, states it, yeah. Figures but, it but, way out. but there's a big push for uh, advocacy. I think it's like um, ketamine's legal for therapy in all states. Uh, the number of states that are decriminalizing mushrooms is um, um, increasing. There's a lot more people getting on board. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it really is. I mean, the people that I know that have done ketamine treatments are not like, they're not like these backwoods little kids. They're, they're people that are successful mm-hmm. in real mm-hmm. jobs, doctors, yeah. lawyers. And it's, it's performance and enhancing. So, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, the people are there. This is a high level. Yeah. I, I'm, sure. I've been very shocked about the people that I found that are, that are starting to do these alternate. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I talked to someone that legitimately says 
that the horn toad or whatever horn, you know what I'm talking <laughs> the about horny toad the horny toad or whatever no. do you know what I'm talking about uh, so there's combo and then there's five meo so you're talking about five meo five meo is DMT and that's um, the toad there's the like to- a, toad it's, poison it's, it's, a, it's a toad excretion from a toad a certain right. type of toad and yeah it contains DMT dimethyltryptamine and it's called five meo. Uh, DMT. Well, they credit to the firm for saving their life. Saving I mean, they, their they life. They say it it's does saved their life. Save people's lives. And she, way, she has work. actually, she's a therapist and has dedicated her life mm-hmm. into, to treating people with that. Yeah. Which I was like, okay. I, I know, I know some therapists in San Diego, who have tried ayahuasca, which is also DMT, uh, and they've tried the toad five meo, and they had these profound, amazing, enlightening experiences that changed their lives. They're therapists for a reason. They're trying to like understand themselves and also help other people understand themselves. And so they pursue and seek and find out that these things work, changes their lives. And they're like, Ooh. so I know a lot of therapists who um, are now making that shift too. And they're like, whoa, I'm all in. I'm very much all in. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's another one that is, is rising in popularity. Another thing that I think is important to, to speak about and which was mentioned in the conference quite a bit is that when we, keep, when we Americans, when we um, humans see something that we like, we're like, ooh, okay, give me, give me, give me, let's produce, mass produce, da, 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 let's figure this out. Oh, a small tribe in uh, Amazon has ayahuasca. Great. And, like everyone floods to Amazon, the Amazon to do ayahuasca. And at the same time, kind of like just stomps all over the place. Great. Thank you for the ayahuasca. See ya. And then uh, so – the, I think there's a lot of caution around this huge movement that's coming. Mm-hmm, for sure. And, and and a lot of, I think it makes sense because- Well, it's scary. It's scary. And also all, I mean, a lot of these practices you know, you are if they're ancient. real. I mean, I, I'm not sure I'm jumping in on the ayahuasca train. I'm, I, I feel like that this breath work- Well, I'm like I think it's, into. well, it's scary for like the personal individual reasons, but it's, I think it's scary too for like the, um, the, the concept that we could just, you know, like use and abuse okay. and, and, and take advantage of- the, the way like the toad is a, a natural living animal and now all of a sudden we're like oh fuck yeah let's breed all these toads and have right. toads and so i think from that space from that like yeah, angle from, that. from the environmental space too it's like um these are like ancient sacred practices and i think it's important to look at them like that and have that in your psyche as you're engaging in these uh therapies mdma is something that's made in the lab so you can consult with your local scientist and thank the local scientist. But um, I, I do want to just make a point to speak into that. Like if you are interested in psychedelics, come in with that like awareness of where you're getting that and what it's coming from. It's just like a positive practice when you're eating food and you're saying thank you to the, the farmers and the cow mm-hmm. that you're about to m- uh, munch down on. So um, I think that's important when it comes to psychedelics and using psychedelics is like honoring that the culture and where it comes from. How have you started? Are you trying to bring all of it together? Or what, what's what's yeah. the plan right now okay. for Justin's Justin's Wellness Center? Justin's Wellness Journey. I, I teach and share these practices um, from a place of like personal ex- experiencing. And, and I I advocate breath work because I practice breath work because the breath work's benefited me. Uh, I advocate for ice bath because of the same exercise. I promote exercise and healthy living because of the positive benefits that I've gained, um, talk therapy, psychedelic therapy, I have engaged in and seen tremendous, tremendous benefit in my own life. And, and so, um, and it's fascinating how everything's converged for me again, like going into physical therapy, learning about the human body and physiology and discovering breath work and recognizing that people are stressed the hell out. And so I need to help people stress the hell out and I can help people stress the hell out by inviting meditative practices and then the best way to meditate is actually to move your body and to breathe and so everything just like has mixed together so uh powerfully and so again my my current health and wellness practice um which is called true self health and human performance it, it really encompasses all of those pieces into one package for whoever i'm working with uh, i work with groups i work with individuals um and at the end of the day, it's it's like, okay, what works for you? Do you like, what's your physical activity levels? Like how can, let's let's do some breath work together. Did you 
vibe with this breathwork technique. Let's try this one. Ooh, you like that one better. Let's do that. And so have you tried the cold ice bath? That's a hell no. Great. We won't, we don't need an ice bath. Are you down for a cold shower every now and then? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So my, my practice is continuing to evolve. I, I'm placed, but I'm a true believer in Northwest Arkansas and Bentonville as being a, a, um, a place where this is like part of the culture and it is and it's becoming that more and more and i know so many people who have moved here and they're like i'm more healthy in arkansas than i was in new york oh, city tonight, like and we, it's we like it's crazy how, many people, how great this place is yeah it's, it's crazy how many people i i see who are moving here and they're like wow i love the the mountain biking scene the the trails the exposure to nature the ozark mountains are magical crazy. dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm fully in on northwest arkansas um i think it's a great full circle for me it's a perfect time for me to come back to the area and I'm excited to bring all my woo-woo science-based practices with me. Local kid coming back with all his woo-woo to woo-woo right. Arkansas. Woo pig suey, that's right. Woo pig suey. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that the woo, pig woo, chant would be starting woo, breathwork? Woo, pig all right, suey. guys, before we do um, uh, the pig <laughs> Arkansas chant, we will be doing it with breathwork. That's right. And, oh, okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but I really appreciate you for coming on. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of fun diving into this new little world. It's fascinating. Yeah. And I encourage everybody out there in the good times world to get a breathwork session from Justin. Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. I think the benefits are truly amazing. And on that. Have a good time. Thank you for having me. Well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to The Good Times Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.